Hi everyone and welcome to my video that is going to show you how to set up and carry out the GCSE required practical for temperature change. This forms part of the energy topic. In this practical we're going to use sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid and we're going to measure the temperature change involved and then I'll show you how to plot a graph of those results. To carry out this practical you will need some safety glasses, you also need measuring cylinders, the reactants we'll be using are hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. The instructions for this required practical often say use a concentration of 2 moles per dm cubed, but you can see I'm only using 0.5 because that's much safer and it will still give me some good results. We're going to carry out the reaction in a polystyrene cup with a lid so that it traps any heat given off by the reaction and therefore we can monitor the temperature change. That lid could be something as simple as a piece of cardboard. Sometimes you might see an exam question where the examiners show the reaction being carried out just in a beaker and ask you to improve the method and that improvement would be to either insulate the beaker with something like cotton wool or to carry out the reaction in a polystyrene cup with a lid. You'll notice I've also got a 250 milliliter beaker and that's to stand the cup inside to stabilize it. Otherwise, when you try and stand a thermometer inside the cup, this is what happens. You can see quite clearly it's going to fall over and spill all the reactants that are inside. We also need a thermometer to measure the temperature change. This standard thermometer will measure to the nearest one degree Celsius, whereas this digital thermometer will measure to 0.1 degrees Celsius. So at the moment, for example, it's recording 24.1 degrees Celsius. So we say this thermometer has a higher resolution. That's a phrase that you need to remember for your exam. Equipment like this is all available from Philip Harris. Just click on the link in the description below my video. So the first thing you need to do is put your safety glasses on and then we're going to stand the polystyrene cup in the beaker so it doesn't fall over. And I'm going to use the measuring cylinder to measure out 30 centimeters cubed of the hydrochloric acid. Then that goes into the beaker and carefully put the lid on the beaker with the thermometer sticking through. And once that temperature is stabilized, we're going to write down the starting temperature of that hydrochloric acid. I'm then going to measure out five centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution. And because it's a smaller amount, I'm using the smaller measuring cylinder. If I was using the same measuring cylinder as the acid, I'd need to be careful that I've rinsed out the measuring cylinder in between each chemical. And you'll notice that I'm also using a pipette. I find a lot of people find it easier to be more accurate with their measurements if they're adding it with a pipette. So then we carefully take the lid off the polystyrene cup, add the sodium hydroxide to the acid and give it a stir. The stirring is important because it makes sure both chemicals react together fully and it also ensures we don't get hot and cold spots within the mixture, we get even heating inside that mixture. Now it's an exothermic reaction, so I would expect the temperature to increase. So I keep watching the thermometer until the temperature doesn't increase anymore. Then I will write that down as the temperature it's reached after adding five centimeters cubed of the sodium hydroxide. When I've done that, I then add a further five centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide, take down the new temperature it reaches, and then keep going until I've added 40 centimeters cubed of the sodium hydroxide solution. After that, I dispose of all of the chemicals, wash everything out and do the whole process again, starting with the acid in the cup and then gradually add in another five centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution. So I get a second set of results and then I do it all again to get a third set of results so I can calculate a mean so that we can then draw a graph from our mean results. When it comes to drawing the graph, as usual, we put the independent variable across the bottom. In this case, the volume of sodium hydroxide added, making sure we include the units centimeters cubed. Up the side, we have the temperature, which is our dependent variable in degrees C. Once again, we've put the units there. 
Now, it's quite an unusual one because the examiners will ask you, in this case, to draw two straight lines of best fit. So we've got an increase in part of the graph and then a decrease in part of the graph. If on your exam you're asked at what point the acid was neutralized, how much of the sodium hydroxide did it take, this is the point of neutralization. So we draw a line down from where the graphs, where the lines cross, and we read off the volume of sodium hydroxide from the bottom. You can also be asked to explain the shape of the graph. So the first part of the graph where it's increasing is because it's an exothermic reaction giving out heat energy. Therefore, we get the temperature increase. After all of the acid has been neutralized, the temperature starts to decrease because the reaction mixture is warmer than the surroundings, so it gives off heat energy and starts to cool down. You're also, of course, adding a cooler liquid to it. The sodium hydroxide that we're adding is now cooler than the actual mixture itself. So that's another reason why the temperature starts to decrease. So you should now have a better understanding of the energy required practical. If you found the video useful, please give it a like. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.